Hi and welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Now today I'll be talking about this Ion Tape to PC deck. It's a twin tape deck that will convert your tapes to a PC MP3 format. Now also I'm going to bring another cassette deck into play and kind of compare the differences between the two. The, 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 the fours, the cons, the pros and cons, something like that. You know, should you buy this one, should you buy an older one? Because this is, you know, a current model code speed. Considering how old the others are that, you know, you go and buy an eBay 40 years old, 30 years old. This was probably about 10 years ago, something like that. It wasn't that long ago. And if you're going to go and pick one of these up, it's going to be in fairly good condition. I think, I don't think, you know, people bought these and didn't really use them a lot, I don't think. Not unless they had a fast collection. You may be unlucky, some bloke had a million cassettes or something like that. But most people just had the odd cassette. It was a novelty item, something like that. So I've had a couple of these in the past, and this is the first one I've reviewed because the one I had previously before I had the channel. They always seem to be in really, really good condition, hard to use, like I say. So I'm gonna give the fours and against of maybe getting one of these, tell you what the sound quality difference is between this and maybe when you go and buy 30 or 40 years old for the same kind of price, second hand on eBay, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna show you quickly how to set it up, you know, where how to connect it up on your PC. Uh, use the software that comes with this, and also use this using Audacity, which is another free software. Uh, you can do a lot more things with Audacity than you can do with the software that comes with this, but it depends how far you want to get into it. And I'm going to use that Audacity software as well to connect up a separate cassette deck, like I said, and work out you know which is the best for you to go and get one of these if you want to keep it nice and simple, but you're not too worried about the sound quality. Or if you want to bring up the sound quality a bit and have a little muck around, you know, filters and all that kind of stuff, maybe using Audacity or something like that. So let's have a little look at the unit itself, uh, then we'll carry on. This is a double cassette deck, twin cassette deck, whatever you want to call it. And on this particular machine, you've got one side that just plays the cassette only, and on the other side, this will play and also record. So, for instance, if you want to make a copy of, say, this cassette, you could put a blank in here, press record, and, it, and, a, and the dubbing button at the front, and it'll dub it across, it'll make a exact copy of it. Obviously, the, the quality will deteriorate a bit, but it'll make a copy of that cassette there. Or, if you wanted to plug something else into it, your CD player, for instance, or your record player, as uh, long as it's got a preamp built into the record player, it'll plug directly into the back of this. You could press, put a cassette in there, press record, and make a copy of your CD if you wanted to for a cassette, if you wanted to go out and about Walkman-wise, something like that, with an old cassette Walkman or something like that. But even though this is budget iFi, this channel, you wouldn't call this iFi. This is more of a convenience. Someone that's looking, you know, looking for the sound to be okay, but not too fast. It's got plenty of dropouts on it. The sound quality is a bit harsh on here, quite harsh on here as well. But it's okay, you know what I mean? It's okay for what it is. Now when this first came out, this was about £99, somewhere around there in the UK. <clears throat> you're going to go and pick this up on eBay now with no problem at all. Get one for £20. So you're paying £20 for a machine. If you've got a few cassettes laying about and you want to convert them to MP3, you're not too fussed about the quality. You think, you know, as long as it's okay, you know, it's still got, you know, a reasonable kind of sound to it. Well, this is going to be fine if you're, you know, if you're expecting hi-fi or some decent sound. So, in other words, if you've got a cassette and it's got a nice recording on it, and you want to get that recording, you know, best detail as possible, then this isn't really a deck for you. Your better bet, I think, is to go out and buy a second-hand cassette deck from maybe 30 or 40 years ago and do it that way. So, I will show you how to do it that way. Just really touching the surface as well. I'll show you this way how I, you know, recorded a cassette to MP3 or to my PC into MP3 using this very, very briefly. You get the idea of it, it's pretty straightforward anyway. So let's have a look at this particular model anyway. So I'm gonna stop this tape. If I take it out, the first thing you notice is how slow this eject mechanism is on this machine. It's so slow. I mean, if, you, if you're in a rush doing things, you're gonna get really, really frustrated and you have to really let, nearly come out to the end because if it's halfway, you can't get the cassette in there anyway. I'll get it out particularly easy. So it's very, very slow. It's not badly made, the actual case is fairly solid, but these drawers are quite flimsy. They kind of don't go in straight, they kind of go in a bit wibbly wobbly. So rather than going in, you know, when they go back dead straight, they kind of go in at a slight angle, depending where you're pushing it. This, you know, this side's near enough in, and that one's still sticking out a little bit, that kind of thing. But other than that, and it's given a fair bit of force to push them in there as well. Other than that, it ain't too bad. Now, actual control wise, so if I stick a cassette in, let's eject it, here we go. I want to give it a bit of help. Uh, yeah, if we stick a cassette in there and we press play, for instance, these buttons are not so bad, they're not the best in the world, but I think as long as you're careful with it, just take your time, don't rush it, you know, just, you know, relax kind of thing, don't go mad, it's going gonna, it's gonna to serve you no problem at all, like, you know what I mean, but it's not 
overly well made, that's for certain. It's made on the cheap. You've got a counter on here, and this counter only works with this recall deck or recall playback recall playback deck here. It only play, uh, sorry, I get this right. I mean, it only goes round or works, shall I say, with this particular deck here. So if you're playing on this deck here, and you kind of know roughly, you know, you, you want to know whereabouts you are on the cassette and all that, you're not going to because this is the only side that that counter works with. You've got a recording level here on the front, so when you do do a recording, if you do a recording that is, you can adjust the record level and get the meters you know, bouncing about and exactly where you want it, etc. Now it's got a, a noise reduction system. I don't think it's dulled or anything like that, that's for certain. But um, you're going to have it in the off position all the time, I think, because it really, other than that, it really cuts the frequencies. All the eyes near enough disappear. Uh, maybe if you're doing a voice cassette and you want to get rid of the is or something like that, you know, you've got one of these audio books on cassette or something like that, and you really wanted to get if there's any top end is or anything like that, then you may flick it over to on. But other than that, you're always going to have this in the off position. So we've got a few buttons on the front. We've got a uh, high speed double. It does do an high speed double. I didn't realise it did that to be honest with you. I didn't do the dubbing on it. All I done was record a cassette onto here. Uh, I didn't actually do any high speed dubbing. I think if it, you know, just at normal speed, it weren't fantastic. So high speed, it's going to be even worse. Like you know what I mean. So I don't think you'd be recording uh, using that too much. You've got um, a CRO two so for CRO two tapes. Um, what we got here, I can't read that. We got um, oh yeah, that's that's for recording the CRO two tapes. So when you record it, you would push that in and a little. Mark would come up, and if you're playing a CRO2 tape, it shows you there. There, and that's just normal, normal dubbing. So you've got normal dubbing and high speed dubbing. Like I say, I don't think you'd be doing too much of the high speed. You may decide to do a normal speed dubbing if you really wanted to make up a backup of a cassette. Though, I don't you know. It's, it's not going to be great quality. It's all right, but it's it's nothing fantastic. You know, what I mean, the actual recording on here wasn't that brilliant. It was okay. A lot of dropouts and etc. It was okay, not I find by any stretch of the imagination, but it was okay. I will put a demonstration of me playing back a cassette, a pre-recorded cassette, which is pretty good quality, on this machine and on my uh, Sharp RT3151. And you can compare the differences there. That'd be a separate video because it would flag up a copyright uh, issue. But um, that RT351, it's still not a fantastic deck, even though it's you know it's quite an expensive deck at the time, and still people still collecting it at the moment. I think mine still needs a bit more tuning up. And the frequency response in that deck with the tape I'm using only goes up to 15 kilohertz. Sorry, 13 kilohertz, 13 kilohertz. This deck here goes up to 15 kilohertz. So kilohertz wise, the higher the frequency, this one is better spec. But the actual sound recording is very edgy, very harsh kind of thing. Uh, even though you're getting higher top end, it's not as nice, it's not as smooth as the uh, RT351. Uh, it just holds it all together and the bass, etc. The bass on here. It's got some like like farting sounds kind of thing. It's, it's not held together at all. The really deep bass is not held together at all. It's all over the place kind of thing. So I'm not trying to put you off this machine. Like I say, if you just want to do a normal uh, recording, it's not too bad for what you're going to pay for it, 15 or 20 pounds, something like that on eBay. I won't be paying too much more than that. It's not too bad. I'm going to flick it around anyway, just show you the back. So on the back, we've got, I'll put a picture up on the screen actually. Uh, we've got the game, the game control there for when you're playing back there, as shown there. That there is when you play back a tape using the uh, USB socket next to it into your PC. That there will adjust the gain, in, 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 you know, the volume coming out of this deck. Uh, but you can also do that in the software anyway. But that adjusts the gain or the volume coming out of this deck. Now, if you come across, you've got your record inputs left and right, and you've got your playback inputs. Oh, sorry, playback outputs left and right. Now, of course. With the outputs there, that using them uh, normal phono reads, uh, that re that gain control does not do anything at all. It's only purely for that USB uh, port at the back. It, it, it makes the uh, volume either loud or, or lower, depending how loud your tape is. Or, you know, you can adjust that anyway in the settings in the actual software itself, Audacity, or the software that comes with this particular unit. So there you go. There's a very, very quick look. Don't want to keep the video too long. Uh, of this actual machine, I'm going to give you a little demo, uh, a link at the top now for that demo track that I actually played using this thing. Uh, I'm going to now show you the RT351 and uh, kind of come with the pros and cons. Right, before I actually go through the pros and cons here, I just want to bring up something that's uh, on quite a lot of the reviews of this item, this uh, Iron Cassette deck. Just take a bear in mind if you're going to go and buy one of these as well, is that you do get a lot of um, mains um coming from this. It's not so much coming from this, it kind of picks it up from amplifiers underneath. So if you're sitting this on top of an amplifier, 
not saying you're definitely going to get a main sum, but uh, the two or three amplifiers I did try this on, I've got a main sum with it. So, you know, what that is, is when you're playing a cassette in the low passage, you know, the quiet track of it, maybe in between tracks, etc., you're going to get that mmm, that mmm sound, that buzzing kind of thing. And obviously that can, you know, put you off a bit, especially if you record on 10p3 and you're going to listen to it on your Walkman or your phone, etc., you're going to suddenly get that buzzing sound. So if that's the case, just move this away as far as possible from your amplifier. That's obviously if you've got an amplifier connected up to this unit. If you haven't got an amplifier connecting it up and just going to connect this straight to your PC or laptop, uh, there's no problem at all. You know what I mean? You're not going to get that main time. It's just that it picks it up from the amplifier below. And, and to a certain extent, this sharp one does as well, but nowhere near as bad as the uh, iron one, but it does pick up a little bit of mains up as well. So just you know, moving it a little bit away from the amplifier will solve that problem. Now, when comparing these two decks, um, I mean, this sharp, like I said, I'm gonna put that video up uh, of both these decks playing a, a pre-recorded cassette, and that's an old cassette, but you know, it's a reasonable quality cassette, something that you may get yourself and you wanna to convert to a MP3 or WAV format or something like that. It'll give you an idea of maybe what to expect. And I keep emphasizing this deck is not in tip top condition by any stretch of the imagination, but it still gives a better sound than this uh, ion sound, you know, this ion machine. But this is more simpler and easier to use uh, if you're not going to use that Audacity program and you're just going to use the program that comes with it. Then this, you know, this is probably the one to go for, maybe. It's going to have a, a longer lifespan, maybe. Being a newer model, I mean, it's, I think it's about eight or nine years old, something like that. But these are probably, if you're going to go and buy one off of eBay, etc., they're probably already used. You know what I mean? Someone's got this as a novelty, maybe converted 20 cassettes or something like that. They wanted, you know, to convert, and that's it. They haven't really done much else with it. So, I um, mean, you know, this is in near enough mint condition. It's in quite good condition. This, and I think I've had one before a while back now, quite a while ago, which before I started the channel. Uh, and that was pretty much the same, but something that was hardly used, like, you know, I mean, more of a novelty, I think. Where if you get something like this, obviously this is 40 years old, somewhere around there. Some of them obviously can have plenty of use. The belts have started to perish. You're going to have to sort out a belt maybe in a month's time. or It's the wow and flutter is quite bad in them now. I mean, you may get lucky and get something decent, but the fact is you could get, so you could be really unlucky and, you know, not sounding that great. Heads worn out, all that kind of thing. So be a bit wary, but on the whole, you know, if you get something in a reasonable condition, you know, it's got a reasonable lifespan still in it, this is probably the better way to go. It's going to give a, a better sounding recording, you know, conversion, if you want to use Audacity, like I say, a free program. So, um, I mean, if these were both brand new, if this, like, they come out yesterday, so to speak, and this was like, I don't know, £99, and this was £300, you would expect this to last longer, it's going to be made better hopefully, and that's pretty much the case, this is more of a solid, robust unit, this is a bit flimsy, and you know, I'm not saying it's going to break any minute, but more of a flimsy, fragile unit than this bottom one, but the fact is that this is like maybe eight or nine years old, somewhere around now I think, I'm guessing a little bit, and this is 40 years old, thereabouts, bit of a difference. This, these things do into it, like replacing the side, etc. But as it is at the moment, it still gives a better sound. As sound wise, I'm going to put that cassette uh, demo up as a separate uh, YouTube upload, just in case you're wondering what the difference is in sound. You're thinking of getting this, and maybe thinking, maybe, oh, should I get another cassette, you know, rather than this, that kind of thing. You can compare the differences. But I think if you went out and got a cheap 20 or 25 pound cassette that's 40 years old or 30 years old, something like that, you're going to get a better recording than you would use in this. Um, and, and that's really it. Where this suffers here, it's got a bit of wow and flat. It's got a lot of dropouts. You hear the dropouts. It's really apparent on the bass. The bass is just it's bits of missing kind of thing. And it, it sounds a bit farty again. I've got to use that word. It doesn't sound right. Now, when it goes down low, it doesn't sound right. There's not a lot of definition to it. Top end is a bit it's harsh, the top end's harsh, even though it goes higher, this is 15 kilohertz, this is only 13 kilohertz uh, on a normal cassette, this is, I'm, I'm quoting them both on. Uh, so this gives an eye out, you know, you can hear the difference, you'll hear the difference on that track, this doesn't go up as high, the top end, you can hear the difference, but it's it's, it's, it's no detail really, and it's, it's, it's harsh, where if this went up higher, it'd be a lot, lot more detail, so, you know, as high as this went, which is 13 kilohertz thereabouts, say, there's a lot more detail, a lot more folk, you know, a lot more, um, resolution to it kind of thing uh, a lot more focused you know a lot more clarity to it than it is on this deck here it may sound like good first of all when you first compare the two think oh this sounds a lot higher a lot brighter etc that's got to be better but it isn't the case you know the sound quality 
is quite a quite a bit of a difference between this unit so what I'm going to do at the end of the video I'm just going to show you how you would connect this up to your PC using the software that come with it it's only a brief I'm not going to go into it too much and also if you wanted to connect it up you can do using audacity and you can use filters etc so if, you know where this maybe has got a bit of um, hiss on it or something like that you could use some filters in there I'm not that I'm going to do that but with audacity you'd have to go and find separate YouTube videos to show you how to do that it'd be too long winded for me to go through all them options and everything else it's not really about you know showing you how to use audacity just letting you know you can use it we have this cassette deck here I'm going to show you how to because you know if you want to got something similar to this how to connect this up to your PC as well and then you would only be able to use audacity or another program like it you won't be able to use the program that come with this for instance so I'll show you how to uh, connect them both up that way as well. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a bad machine for what you're going to pay. You're going to pay, say, £20 if you're not too worried about, you're not too critical about the actual recording. You just want to record and convert it to MP3. Then this is not bad. And once you've done, you could probably sell on again, get your money back kind of thing. Well, this year, you know, something like this, a unit like this with a single or twin cassette, is going to give a better recording per se. I would have said, not unless you're unlucky and get one that's you know a really rough shape or the heads are gone or something terrible inside. But if you're getting something that's maybe on eBay and the, and the bloke's saying it sounds fine, it sounds nice, etc., you're going to pick up a cheap one, 20 or 30 pound maybe. It won't be as fancy as this, it'll just be a basic one, but it's still probably going to look better than this particular unit here. Uh, and it's something you may want to keep. It's something you could probably call i fi as well, where if you bought this and stuck it in your i-fi kind of like unit so to speak you know your i-fi table and that you wouldn't this would be letting it down so much you wouldn't really this is not hi-fi this is like just a seno it's, it's a basic very basic unit that doesn't sound too bad it's you know it's 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 okay for what it's going to do play some of your old tapes that you know if you if, if you had if you had you'd rather have this than nothing so to speak but uh if you bought a second hand one, 20 or 30, 40 years old, something like that, it's still going okay. Maybe the uh, seller's changed the belts. I mean, you'd be lucky to get one for 20 or 30 pounds when he's changed the belts, I must admit. But, you know, you may be lucky that they're still going to, fair bit of life in them belts, the ones that are fitted. But at a later date, you may have to kind of sort out getting new belts fitted, etc. But it's going to give a better sound. You can do better recordings, I would have said, than you are on this, that's for certain. It's going to have a better sound. And it's something you could probably tag as you know even for that 20 or 30 pound as an i-fi kind of unit obviously if you started going 100 pound or 120 pound or 150 pound something like that you're going to get better machines some have been refurbished maybe and all that you're going to get a much much better sound yet again so you know there it is you know it's not a bad unit what i would say it's not bad for what it's going to do just convert your cassettes but if you if you're putting it into an i-fi you'll be soon putting it out again you know like this you're really desperate and you'll be better off looking around for a second hand older unit uh, it's going to give a much better sound so you know at the end of this video like i say i'm just going to show you how to uh, connect these up and everything but i'm going to end it here sorry it was a bit long-winded and kerfuffled and all over the place it was a bit of a nightmare to put together really to be honest i've done so many takes didn't know which way around to do it so i'm going to try and stay clear of these videos now where you've kind of intermingled too many things with each other connecting them up to pcs and all that kind of stuff but just for a matter of curiosity if anyone was thinking about getting one of these i wanted to put this video up just to say you know it's mediocre kind of thing Okay, so thanks for bearing with us. The little bit at the end's coming up. Until the next video, I'll see you all soon. Okay, so there's the uh, rear of the tape to tape PC, the double cassette deck. Uh, we'll take a closer look. You've got the gain control there, uh, and that's there like a volume, the volume out or the gain, the recording level uh, control there. You can adjust it there, but you can also adjust it within the actual program that comes with it and in Audacity. So you can either use this or or the actual uh, controls in the actual programs or a mixture of both it's up to you so we're going to connect this up to the pc to do that we need a usb uh, a lead and this is the usb lead that comes with it it's got a flat usb uh, type one i think that is and a, a kind of printer kind of uh, connection on the other end there maybe a little bit of better view of them so there you can see the uh, funnier shape the more box shaped one goes into the back of the uh, tape to tape pc unit and the other end is going to connect to your PC, a spare USB uh, port. So there's a spare USB port and there it is plugged in. Once plugged in, we boot up the software uh, that comes with it. And as you can see, uh, there's the first screen to get you connected and just press next. There's the second screen there. Uh, and on this screen here, you can adjust the recording gain, the level there, uh, using the slider bar there towards the right hand side until it gets to near the peak. Uh, or you can actually use the... Uh, out there that little gain control on the back of the unit itself which i showed you earlier or a combination of both 
Uh, once you've got the recording level uh, ready, you just press next and it'll start recording and it'll count down in seconds and it'll give it a track name as well. And uh, once you've done one track, you may want to do a second track, you know, once that's finished and press new track, etc, etc. If not, press next. Uh, if you're just doing one track, then you can name it, you can give it the artist, the album and the title track. Uh, and once you finish that, it would uh, save it to the save location and you can either do another one or just exit the actual program. Well, there is another way of connecting this up if you wanted to, uh, when using Audacity only, um, is using the uh, output of this actual unit. I mean, you, you can still use Audacity with the uh, USB lead we've already got connected. That lead already connected, as I've just shown you. You can use that lead and use Audacity as well. And you can use the gain control on the back of the unit to uh, kind of do the uh, recording level, as well as the recording level within the program Audacity itself, which I'll show you a bit later on. But uh, to do that, you'll need a 3.5 millimeter uh, lead, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack, should I say, to a phono lead as shown here. This is a stereo lead. And that would plug in in the back of the unit as shown there. And then you'll have to find an input on your PC, usually like a little microphone, something like that as shown here. And that lead would plug in to the uh, microphone socket there. Once that's plugged in, we'll load up Audacity. And here you can see the recording level you can set the recording level how high you want the recording level at the top here uh, towards the top right as arrowed here and also on this program if you want to actually hear live what you're recording so as you're recording you want to hear what you're actually recording make sure you come to transport and transport options and tick software playthrough on and off and that allow you to uh, hear what you're actually recording uh, once you've done that you can export this as mp3 wave and quite a few other files so examples there uh, you know depending what you want to use it for etc and kind of quality and also here you can also start doing a little bit of mucking around having a graphic equalizer noise reduction uh, high pass filter low pass filter cross fade all different kind of stuff to have a little bit of a muck around if you want to or tidy it up etc so that pretty much covers uh, connecting this particular deck up using audacity and the actual program that comes with it now if you wanted to use your own tape deck you know an iFi tape deck uh, rather than that ion tape deck, just a normal plain iFi, just find the line output, that same lead that we just used, the 3.5mm jack to uh, stereo phono, that will plug in the rear and the line out, and that will just plug into your PC, into the microphone or input you've got on your PC, then you can load up Audacity and do exactly the same as you did with the iron deck, record on that, save the file format and do any adjustments etc. And the volume control, or so to speak, or the recording level will be that top right hand uh, adjustment in Audacity to get the correct recording level. Not unless your tape deck's got an actual variable output, which only, only the towards the top end ones do. So, you know, on the main case, you'll be using that input level, that recording level, uh, to adjust the uh, input level to get it to the right uh, volume level you want so it doesn't distort and does a good recording so that really wraps it up that is uh, how to connect up the iron and also an extra like spare or uh, another deck that you've bought off of ebay etc uh, tape deck and do it that way so it's two ways of uh, actually getting uh, that tape onto mp3 onto a cd maybe or something like that uh, so you can play it on your mp3 player your phone etc